Hi there, welcome back. I want to show you what I do when I procrastinate. I have been putting this one off, this part off, for some time. And if you look at it, you'll understand why. I have to replace that backboard on the faceplate. This is a wooden board which has been completely eaten through by woodworm. And it's going to be quite a job. I have to dismantle everything, be careful that I mark everything and uh, store it properly so I don't forget what goes where. There are a lot of little holes and connectors and pulleys connected to it and everything else. I then have to find a grill cloth that will go on here and I think I've got that already. But anyway, that's what I'm hoping to do very, very soon. But because I feel like procrastinating, Instead of that, I've gone on to the next step. And it always works. When you're procrastinating, do something else. Now this thing is a Bluetooth system that I'm going to install inside the radio as unobtrusively as possible so that uh, we can use the receiver effectively as a Bluetooth receiver and amplifier. My friend has a teenage daughter and she loves the idea of using that old technology with uh, her iPhone. So I'll show you what went into that. Basically what we want to do is to use a Bluetooth receiver which is uh, really just a little gadget which usually plugs into USB power. It has a jack plug output which will give you your ground, your left and your right signal. And it has an antenna in here. And if you power it up and you match it to your device, your iPhone, anything that uh, transmits Bluetooth, you can then send it, send your signal from your device via Bluetooth to your uh, receiver. Now what happens then is you take this and you put it into an amplifier and in this case we're putting it into the back of the radio where we have those two phono in the phono input. One is signal and the one is the other one is ground. Now it's very simple really um, especially if you use an external power and if you use an external self-standing device. What I decided to do was actually to fit this one inside because I have a Bluetooth receiver which uh, had a, the battery removed. So I've decided to actually use the one that I've got and uh, power it from the actual radio itself. So let's see how we do that. So basically this is it. What we have here is we've got a power line coming in. This blue wire is the power coming in and what it's using is the heater voltage. So 6.3 volt AC coming in. There is a uh, bridge rectifier here and a filter cap. So it converts that to uh, DC volts. It then goes through a 5 volt voltage uh, regulator and that converts that to 5 volts. It then has something else. It's got a diode here and the reason for that is I'm actually going to power this um, receiver into the pins that receive the battery and the battery is about 4.2 volts. So I wanted to drop the 5 to close to 4.2 and the diode drop is perfect for that. It'll drop 0.6 or 0.7 volts and so that then feeds the power and then the uh, output which is a little uh, socket I've then taken that out, converted it to mono, and it goes off in the cable to the, um, to the back, to the phono input of the radio. There's something else here, which is a voltage isolator. It's a little, uh, little chip thing. Basically what it does is it uh, receives 5 volts or close to 5 volts, and it outputs the second, uh, a similar voltage, but it uh, is completely isolated from the first one. And the reason for that will become very apparent in a minute. Let me show you what the basic schematic for this is. 
So I'm using the 6.3 volts AC. Heater voltage. And I take that into a bridge rectifier. Really just about anyone will do. You can even use four diodes. I use the bridge rectifier because I had one lying around. That then gets filtered by a capacitor, just a normal capacitor, electrolytic. This one happens to be 2200 microfarads at 25 volts. Now what we have here is we've got 6.3 volts. When it gets converted to uh, DC, the peak will be about 1.4 volt, 1.4 times that. So 6.3 times 1.4 is about 8.6. Approximately. Actually, that's more like 8.8, .8, and then you subtract two diode drops of about 1.2, so 7.6 volts DC. Now I want uh, 4.2, 4.3 volts, so I take that into a voltage regulator. It's the 7805. 5 volts voltage regulator, you've got your in, your out, and your ground. And that's as simple as that. You've got yourself plus 5 volts over here. I've used another capacitor here. Just to reduce a bit of ripple, this one is 100 microfarads, 25 volts. So there's our voltage. Now to take this one step further, this thing cannot be connected directly to the Bluetooth set for the simple reason that what it's got is the Bluetooth itself uses ground, the battery, the power ground, connected to the audio ground. So that means that this ground would become the Bluetooth system's ground as well. And we know that one of these heater wires is connected to ground. So if you happen to mess that up, you're basically shorting this, uh, the signal to ground anyway. So the best way to do that, and also to avoid um, high frequency buzz going through, because the Bluetooth does um, create uh, some buzz if you have a ground loop in, uh, in the system. So what, what you've got is you've got a little chip, and it's very, very small. It's basically this little thing over here. And it receives, what it does is it, it receives 5 volts, so plus 5, 0, or ground, and it outputs 0 volts plus 5 volts. And these two are isolated, basically through a transformer coupling, and it's isolated, so this ground is no longer connected to that ground over there. This becomes completely autonomous, and that's our supply. I did go one step further, and that is that I put a diode on here, a 1N4007. You can use just about any diode. And that means that this 5 volts here becomes 4.3 volts here which is basically what I want coming out here, 4.3 volts. It reflects the same voltage uh, within a certain range. I think it's between 4 and 5.5 uh, and volts or something. So I'm getting then from that supply, I'm getting these two voltages. Then what I did is I took the Bluetooth system, and the Bluetooth system is a little board like that. It's got a plus and minus battery supply there. It's got a ground, left channel, right channel, over there. I put two pins through there, soldered it back down into the, uh, into the board. So let's just go through that quickly. There's your voltage regular, uh, the uh, bridge rectifier. There's our filter cap that goes to the uh, voltage regulator. The voltage regulator has a diode on the output there. There's the cap that filters the output, that then goes into there, and that coming from there goes to these pins over here. 
These are the supply, the battery voltage supply pins. Then there's the uh, audio out pins, which are on this jack. It's got ground, left and right. And I've taken them and passed the two signal wires, two signal lines through 1K resistors to create a mono signal. So what I've done here is, this obviously goes to my 4.3 volts. That goes to my zero volts. And now I've got this ground, but I've got these two, these two signals here coupled together 1K resistors. So left and right signal join are summed, but they're isolated with a 1K resistor each. So I basically have a mono signal coming here, and my mono signal then goes to the radio phono input. And my ground signal goes to the phono ground. Now, this ground is getting connected to that ground again, but it, it's only being connected at one point, which is at the audio input. And therefore, no ground loops will happen because this ground is not connected at that end to the ground that we've created before. So basically, our system then receives a signal. That receives a signal. When I power on the radio, it gets 6.3 volts AC heater, wire, heater voltage. It uh, reduces all that, produces my battery voltage, if you want to call it that, which feeds the uh, Bluetooth receiver. Bluetooth receiver receives a signal once you've paired it with your device, and it emits or produces the audio, which is then converted to mono with these two resistors. And I've actually done this before. I've shown how to create a cable uh, to do that. I'll link that above. And um, it produces a mono signal, which goes to the back of the phono of the radio, the phono input of the radio. So let me have a show you a closer look at this, and you'll see what's been done. So here we have it. I have one board. These uh, boards that you buy in bulk, well, in batches of them from eBay, they become quite useful. We have our. Uh, bridge rectifier and filter cap over there. You can see all the components leading up to the little isolator there. That's the isolator chip on there. You can build it any way you like. I've just decided to build it like this. Then those two pins there are my battery pins for the, um, for the Bluetooth module, which is this board over here. I put through wires through there and they join the output of that voltage isolator. Uh, on the bottom there, be careful with shorts, there is a bit of uh, padding between them so that we don't create shorts. And then the output is here into this uh, dual cable. It's The white and red is basically uh, wired together because I'm using this uh, audio cable for mono. The ground is at the top there, which goes to the ground of the jack. And then this cable finish, finishes in two banana plugs, which fit neatly into the back of the uh, of the phono. And this thing works really, really well. Uh, the one thing that sometimes happens is that you get a buzz. And that buzz is because of the switching noise inside the, um, the Bluetooth device. Um, you sometimes hear it in the audio if you don't isolate the power like that. I've done a previous uh, adaptation of or connecting Bluetooth video, and I'll link that above. That was done slightly differently because I didn't want to use or hadn't yet got or found those voltage um, supply isolators. So I actually wound another turn or another secondary on the transformer and used that. So I'll link that above. You can look at that as well. But the result of this thing is quite amazing, and I'll show you. I'll just connect that and show you. Those two yellow wires there are the heater voltage, uh, which is actually used for the uh, dial lamps in the front. And depending on where I mount this on the inside, I probably will use exactly those points. But they are temporarily connected to the blue wires, which is the uh, AC input. We've got our output there, which goes to the back of the radio. And those two fit into the phono plug at the back. So we're ready to test this and all I need to do really is just power on the radio. And when you hear that you'll see the lights come on 
on the Bluetooth device. There we go. It is now seeking, in fact it's found a signal. It would have found my iPhone uh, because I'd paired uh, the two before. So I'll have to just uh, change that to the uh, iPad. So I'm going to connect the iPad, get some royalty free music ready and uh, I'll show you how this works. So we'll go to Bluetooth devices, let it look for it. It's found something called miscellaneous, I'm not sure if that is it. And it's found H166 and that is it, that's connected to Bluetooth. So whatever plays on here is going to go over to there. So all I need to do now is find some uh, royalty free music and play it for you. Okay, we've got some, we've got a tune here that's uh, royalty free so I won't get hit with copyright. I can control the source of the music on here as I would normally. This could be from my iTunes, uh, YouTube, iTunes library, it could be from uh, Spotify, it could be from any source of music. This happens to be a clip within uh, the uh, YouTube uh, audio library. And I can then control play and stop from here. And also the volume over here, I control the volume as per normal. And I think you can already hear it. If I up the volume, voila. Then my uh, tone controls work as per normal as well. Ooh, that's a bit bassy. While we're here, I'll show you something else that's happened. You might be able to see that this thing's had a bit of a wash. All the knobs have been cleaned. And believe me, that took quite a bit of doing. Knobs were cleaned, the uh, dials were cleaned, everything oiled, lubricated, put back. Another step that was taken was uh, in the um, fine-tuning the band spread function which now works perfectly this thing did not need me to remove the rubbers I just need to clean uh, needed to clean the grime that was on there the other thing I've uh, noticed is that one of them works for one of the bands and the other one works for three of the bands so they uh, are not in parallel they actually work separately but they're now working quite well and you'll see that when I do the final uh, reception check but for now here's our little Bluetooth receiver which will be placed uh, as unobtrusively as possible within the cabinet when uh, I put this back, but uh, at least it's done now. Any kind of Bluetooth receiver module can be used. There are literally hundreds of them for sale. All you need to do is worry about where the power comes from and where the audio goes to, and just remember to make sure that your audio goes in mono if you have one of these sets. Um, the other thing is the uh, voltage um, isolator, the supply isolator is, I would say it's essential if you're using it within the radio with the uh, heater supply. If you're using an external one, which you can get these uh, in external versions as well, you charge them up with the Bluetooth uh, charger, with a USB charger, micro USB charger, and they last a hell of a long time and you just, you don't need to put this inside at all, you just plug it in the back. But for now, that's what we have. And uh, 
I am losing, running out of excuses uh, to put off that front plate, front panel. So I guess that'll be next.